The Premier League has grown to become the richest football league in the world, but in doing so, it's created a problem for itself. That wealth is the reason that Premier League teams are able to buy the majority of the world's most desirable players. It's also the reason that they then struggle to sell them, leading to unmovable players on big contracts and squad stagnation. Which begs the question, how big is the downside of having all of the money in the world? In the January 2023 window, 18 of the 20 most valuable deals were completed by English clubs. And in the previous transfer period, 12 of the top 20 deals were completed by English clubs. And as a whole, during the 2022 summer window, Premier League clubs combined to spend roughly 2.2 billion euros, almost three times that of Serie A clubs and over four times the amount spent by teams in Liga, La Liga and the Bundesliga. So the Premier League's advantage is not in question. Nor is the fact that, at its best, its wealth can create a hugely compelling sporting spectacle and some of the best football teams the game has seen. In addition to which, because much of the Premier League's broadcasting contract is split evenly between the participating clubs, high-quality expensive players are accessible even to newly promoted and traditional unfashionable sides. Nottingham Forest, for instance, were able to buy players of the calibre of Renan Lodi and Danilo on returning to the Premier League and it's impossible to imagine a club in a similar situation in any other country having such pulling power. The benefits to that are self-evident. However, the disadvantages are beginning to reveal themselves more quickly. Being able to sign famous players for big fees and wages is only a good thing when those deals are successful, and that's particularly true for the Premier League, and particularly now. The Premier League's broadcasting contract is worth £1.6 billion each season. That compares to the 926 million in the Bundesliga, 850 for La Liga, and 796 for Serie A. In addition to which, according to the 2023 edition of the Deloitte Money League, which ranks football clubs according to their annual revenue, 11 of the top 20 positions were occupied by English clubs. It's a further description of the Premier League's dominance, but also, viewed from another perspective, it shows how few buying clubs there are outside of it. So, if a Premier League club has an unwanted player, or one they are motivated to sell for whatever reason, where is a sizable bid likely to come from? Well, perhaps from inside the league itself, or from a continental super club, or maybe from Saudi Arabia. But that is not a very long list. Directed by an inability to properly compete, almost all other European clubs now exist to recruit well and sell high, rather than to offer alternate homes to mid-career players earning hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. And this creates a trap of sorts for Premier League teams. In a hypothetical situation, a new player might be signed to a long and generous contract by an English team. If that move then doesn't succeed and clubs from outside the Premier League are unable to offer an equivalent contract, then the player isn't motivated to leave. Or alternatively, might be condemned to spend the duration of his deal on loan or out of the first team. And already there are plenty of examples across the Premier League. Among others, Tanguy Ndombele and Giovanni Lo Celso at Tottenham, Anthony Martial, Harry Maguire and Donny van der Beek at Manchester United, Romelu Lukaku and the recently released Bakayoko at Chelsea, and Calvin Phillips at Manchester City. And exacerbating this issue is the fact that transfers are difficult. While some situations are the result of poor recruitment and bad decision-making, the reality is that most deals have around a 1 in 2 chance of success. At a stats bomb conference in 2020, Liverpool's former Director of Research, Dr Ian Graham, expanded on why describing the six principal reasons why a transfer might fail. And they are as follows. A player not being played in a suitable position. The player not fitting the team's native style. A poor relationship with a new coach. Personal issues. And either a teammate being better or the player not being as good as originally thought. And Graham's point, as reported by The Athletic's Tom Warville, is that even if you were 90% certain of success in each of those six categories, statistically, you still only have a 53% chance of a successful transfer. And of course, wealth doesn't necessarily improve those odds. It can do, with better recruitment strategies and more aligned thinking, but being able to afford a transfer and making it work are two very different things. Clawing back the cost of a bad deal is challenging on its own especially when it means trying to sell to clubs from a completely different economic stratosphere. So the consequences are potentially serious. While many Premier League clubs can afford to carry a sizable wage bill, that still puts them at risk of financial fair play sanctions, both in their domestic leagues and abroad. 
and in certain situations it might also enforce limits on what they can spend, thereby limiting the influence of their wealth. And that's of course to say nothing of the technical cost, the degradation of players who aren't being used, and the practical and social problems that result from an unbalanced squad. So, the upside of this financial domination is obvious. It brings the best coaches, the best players, and often the finest infrastructure, the most supporters, and the largest revenue. But while maybe an accepted downside, the Premier League's success has also created a new danger. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.